Green Interweb, it's Jackie K, and welcome to my Timeless Cup tournament. Possibly first, and not just the only. Cause I don't know. I spent way, way too much stardust on this tournament. Or this cup, I should say, to do just one this month. I'm also trying something a little different where I at least start the commentary. The day of the tournament, normally it was too much hassle, but I feel like, especially trying to commentate Ferocious Cup, if I let too much time pass by, then... Eek. I don't know what to talk about, especially when it's just me losing each match of the battles. <laughs> but yeah, rip my Stardust, my poor, poor Stardust, that was probably around a million before I start trying to prepare for this tournament. And you guys probably wouldn't believe that I was actually using, or should I say reusing Pokemon from past cups. Like this guy, Florida Dino. Definitely not PvP IVs, but had him from a past cup. My plan going in was this would be the tournament that I would actually save my Stardust because there were so many cool things that I wanted to play with that I didn't already power up. And then... My lovely 98 PvP IV, if not higher cast form, was a thing and I may have spent a lot of my dust powering up this thing just to use double cast form because let's be real, when am I ever going to opportunity to even humor anyone with those words, let alone actually implement it. But on that topic, this cast form was actually another one that I am reusing. Not that great of PvP IVs, but it was almost powered up all the way already. It had a third move! <laughs> Probably because I think there was a cup real early on that I wanted to try a cast form with, but never actually commit to it. Let's see. He may remember Mr. No Arms. Unfortunately, Mr. No Arms is taking a break, and his sister, Ms. No Arms, is taking the place. And it's just a whooper that I found with slightly better PvP IVs. So I went for it. Fun thing is that I actually TM away from Stone Edge to Acid Spray on Mr. No Arms. But then Ms. No Arms pretty much got this move set on her own, maybe like one TM. So I was like, screw it, it was fated to be. I'm using another Mud Shot Stone Edge, another Stone Edge Earthquake Quagsire. If it's fair at all, at least this one, I believe. Mud Shot is a new move, and I've personally a lot better of a quick move, just because it has less you get to your charge moves faster. And I think the last of the Pokemon that I'm completely reusing is King C. Kind of a sexy, but hey, with how much does I spend just getting these team members together? Gotta save where I can. Got the Waterfall, the Hydro Pump, and the Outrage. Now for the completely new team members. I have Mia Chill, which I kind of pointed out before. That's her IV spread. Actually really shocked how good of an IV spread it was. If I remember, maybe I'd like post on the side how these look in Poke Genie, because it recently had a new feature where you can actually see as a visible percentile how good the IVs are for PvP and you can pick out whether it be for Great Link or Ultra Link. Probably Master Links too, but I think technically, because you can max out the CP all the way, more than all, that the IVs that you would just want a hundred percent IVs for those cases. So I don't think they actually bother, you're just looking for the same IVs that you are for rating, which is perfect. 
And yeah, it's got water, powder snow, water ball, ice beam. I know I didn't need a second charge move, but I was just thinking, I could see Blizzard being useful for like, I wipe away all the shields thanks to how just spammable water ball is, and I can just get a powerful ice attack off on something. But I ran out of TMs. <laughs> Reviewing Ms. No Arms a little bit closer. Got IV spread here. Got Mud Shot, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. Like I said before, I kinda was just faded to be, but I felt this is felt like the more safer set to me than going with Acid Spray, which is my other consideration. Plus I kept hearing about Met Venomoth popping up every now and then. And I wanted to make sure I had at least one rock move on my disposal, just in case I ran into a Venom off. Did I talk about Florida Dino already? I think I just didn't really go over the moveset. Is your standard Venusaur, or at least the same as before, Razor Leaf, Frenzy Play, and Sledge Bomb? I was actually going to try Vine Whip this time, because... Vine Whip lets you get to your charge moves faster, while Razor Leaf does more raw damage. I actually did bother to do some calcs this time. <laughs> I know super casual me usually never bothers with the calcs and only just goes on to IV pokes to just compare the Pokemon in the general ranking for the cup, if I even bother to do that. Point being, I did some calcs against Lapras because honestly that felt like the biggest threat. To me, I had plenty of ways to counter Dragonair, which was the other top talked Pokemon for this time's cup. And in all my calcs, Venusaur could actually take care of a Lapras. If it had Razor Leaf. It would die every time to a Lapras if it did not have Razor Leaf. So that's my ultimate decision. And speaking of Dragonair, this real star of the show, my good old purified Dragonair Mystia. Wow, when I actually say that out loud, that actually sounds clever. That wasn't my intent. Anyways, this got it's your standard Dragonair for this Timeless Cup, Dragon Bat Breath, because it's such a good move for getting up to your charge moves, Return, and Aqua Tail. Basically, you want Purified Dragonair over a normal one for Return. I mean, there's also the fact that it's cheaper to actually power up and teach a second move too because of the whole purification discount, but most of the time people don't really bother with the purified Pokemon for that just because then you have to like go for some complications with the IVs. Specifically like because a lot of purified Pokemon always gain two IVs when you purify them. They also gain a bunch of levels sold. The majority of Shadow Pokemon can't be entered in the Great League because one, Shadow Pokemon suck, Returns or Frustration is a terrible move and you can't get rid of it. But two, purif the, when you actually do purify it, it boosts the level up so much that a lot of Pokemon go over the 1500 CP mark without any influence on you. As a fan of Shadow or Purified Pokemon as I am, I am happy to actually see Dragonair actually be valuable for this specific purpose. Return isn't a bad move, it's just being a normal type, you don't get stabbed on a lot of things, and it doesn't have super effective damage or anything. But because it's a 3 bar move, very similar to Body Slam, it gets you get a lot of use out of it just for spamming to get rid of shields, and its power ain't bad. It's just a shame that you can't use more purified Pokemon in the Great League, specifically because of the mechanics of Shadow Pokemon and purifying them. If you're curious to learn more about that, I do kind of go over it in a podcast that I recorded that should be up at this point, where I specifically talk about the time flu, but in the process I talk about why time... The reasons that I theorize that pu purifying Pokemon isn't as popular as it could be. And I kind of go a little bit over the Great League meta and how purified Pokemon struggle to squeeze into it in that conversation. Just a quick little plug while I'm making content. 
Now, I think I got over everything I can with my Pokemon in hand. So, why don't we go over and check out some of the battles? Hey Interwebs, quick update before I get into the video proper. This whole tournament, so this video and the following video, were recorded before the major PvP shakeup that Nan gave us a few days ago. Like, the second week of the month. I bring this up because it's going to affect the meta that you see here and what I use and what other people use for the Timeless Cup probably won't apply to you because not only are there a bunch of new moves that Pokemon can use but the effects of certain moves have been changed to make them better and worse as well as a few specific rule sets relating to battle itself such as if two Pokemon get to their charge move at the same time, the one with the higher attack stat winning. None of this will apply to these battles, so I figured I'd let you all know in advance just in case going into the video things seem confusing. Alright, onwards with the content. Alright, jumping right into the battles. This is what my opponent has. The Victory Bell, Charizard, Celio, Stunk Tank, Muck, and Witch Cass. Looking at this team here, I honestly do see quite a few threats worth the note. Especially in hindsight, the Asilio giving my team more trouble than I thought. I got so caught up trying to find a good counter for Lapras, I didn't really think too much about Celio. And considering they have similar typing, I guess, didn't seem as big of a deal. But for some reason, I was a bit more afraid to send my Venusaur out against that Celio than I was against a Lapras. Other things that were worth looking into, though, included like the Charizard. I think at this point, I was still trying to figure, get a feel of what worked best for Charizard, and I thought my Quagsire would do the best against it. So that's probably why you'll see Quagsire in a few of these early matches, because I was just thinking of like getting up the power of Mud Shot for neutral damage and then like still nudging it. Quit Wish Cast, I will admit, I severely underestimated Quit Wish Cast in this cup. But if I can save my Venusaur for it, it should be able to handle things no problem. So ultimately to start off with, I decided to lead with my Dragonair, have the Quagsire for Charizard, and have my Venusaur in the back. It One thing that I... The hardest part about Pokemon Go PvP for me is that it all comes down to your lead. Unlike in the main series game where you either have four Pokemon or your full team, you only have three, and with how the game limits your switching, if you have the wrong lead, your opponent has a major disadvantage or advantage over you. My personal disadvantage. Now to lead off with, I got my Dragonair against this Charizard. Honestly, this is a good lead for me because Aqua Tail does major work. It's like Dragonair's defining point in this cup. It's like a lot of 3-bar moves that are good for PvP where they just come out really fast and you have a decent amount of power. So I think at this point like I wanted to do a little bit of damage with this Dragonair before swapping over to Venusaur because the Celio wasn't hurting my Dragonair too bad and because Ice does strong damage against my Grass type. I want to make sure that I had a significant advantage before leaving my Venusaur in here to finish off the Celio, just to make sure that I took the Celio down, because if I lost Venusaur to the Celio, I was in big trouble. To be fair, I'm probably still in big trouble just with the way I play. Things are looking pretty good though. I do go into my, drag my Quagsire here, which is honestly my biggest mistake with this tournament, just having a Dragonair and not relying on it more, because even though I have Aqua Tail with Dragonair, I was just so convinced that my Quagsire would be able to do enough with Mudshot and Stone Edge. I guess I just have underestimated the 
way mechanics work in Pokemon Go of it. Because I know you still do damage, and I know in the main series game, ground moves would do nothing to a Charizard. Because it's flying type. But I find this game just treated as not very effectiveness. So I thought the super effective against fire and the resistance of flying would cancel each other out. But instead, like, I probably could have taken out this Charizard with my Dragonair. And saved the slot that my Quagsire is taking up with something else like... Let me just go back to what he has on his team, and take a look-see. Yeah, that Quagsire... To be honest, if I placed that Quagsire with Kingdra, that could have won me the match, because like it's Celio, or even Sunny Cast Form. I'm actually pretty surprised of how well Sunny Cast Form did for me. Despite, like, putting all my confidence into the double cast form moveset, or the double cast form team core, I will be totally honest with you guys. I ran the double cast form core for the lulls more than for its legitimacy. If I was trying to use the best team possible, I probably would have just used Lapras instead of the cast form. But between just how good the IVs on my snowy cast form were, and just the novelty of being able to have two cast forms on a team, something I'd never be able to do in the main series games, I just felt like I had to go with it. Ouch, um, yeah, like... I forgot about Dragon Claw, so maybe... I wasn't completely in the wrong... having... Not relying solely on Dragonair to take out Charizard. And I'm regretting using up my Venusaur so early on. Yeah, probably if I just had my Sunny Cast form for the Celio, I could have saved my Venusaur for the Wish Cast and be good from there. A common theme that we're actually going to see a lot of in this tournament of me... Underestimating the power of Wish Cast. I know that Wish Cast is way better than Quagsire, especially for this cup. But I forgot just how good... Having a Mud Bomb user is. So, this is going to be my team going into the second part. Really? Really past me? That's what I thought. Let's give myself a sec to actually not use the same exact team and learn from my past mistakes. Alright, going into the second match, I'm going to be leading with a sunny cast form. And hopefully be amazed by just how good it is. Half the king drug, because I was a little afraid of having Dragonair with that Dragon Claw. Charizard, and like I said, I feel like I didn't really understand just how good my Dragonair was until it was too late. And Venusaur, well, when I saw the Wish Cast actually be used, I knew I had to have Venusaur. Honestly, I was thinking more about it, I knew I had to have Venusaur for that Wish Cast no matter what, but it is what it is. And here we go. Let's see just how good Celio is against Cast Form. I guess the big part that just makes me nervous is it is a water ice type. So it basically comes down to what quick move it has. The fact that this Celio has Powder Snow probably means that it's safe, really safe for me to use my Sun Cast Form against it. But maybe if it had a water type quick move, it wouldn't be another story. Because I haven't used a Celio yet for PvP, I don't recall if it can get a water quick move or not. I'm 99% sure it does, though. It just feels like it wouldn't be right if that was the case. And... Please don't tell me I used another shield. Tell me I catch on to the fact that it's just spamming Body Slam. Yep. And with that, the Celio's done. So all you people watching along, yeah... Sunny form, cast form can take care of a wish cast fairly well, and I know it's kind of bold of me to leave my cast form in for so long, but you saw how close I was getting to the solar beam. I did feel pretty confident that 
if he, if he didn't block it, that solar beam would have hit. To be fair, it might have been a little too suspicious that it would be going for the solar beam, leaving my cast form model against a disadvantage, so that's why I ultimately decided to switch. Though that's gonna hurt me, cause he gets a switch advantage, cause he switches his Charizard onto my Venusaur, and now I'm down the shield and down the situation. Dragon Claw Charizard is going to be able to do some more work to my Dragon type Pokemon. <laughs> ah, freaking damage with the whole single three bar quick move. But alas, I did get rid of the Charizard. So I do have my Venusaur for the rest of his Pokemon. I decided to use my shield here because, like, it's my three against his, my two against his one. Any advantage I can give to my Venusaur is well appreciated. Getting the Wasted Slash Shield would be super nice. But, I mean, he still has two shields to go. So I'm pretty much going to have to rely on fast moves, which makes it even more vile that I have my King Car King Rub wear out the Swiss Cash as much as possible, because... Oh shoot, I forgot that Venusaur is already dead. And I'm forced to rely on cast form, which that's where the super nervous come in. I just like get right into spamming water ball as quickly as possible. At least I get rid of the shields relatively quickly, but I don't have enough health left to store up for a solar beam. So I'm just gonna have to hope that I can spam enough water balls to win. And what would you know? I spammed enough water balls to do the win. Now it's just a matter to see if I can win that last match. It looks like I learned some things from the previous battle. But can I implement that into the final round, or will my opponent learn some things from the previous battle to put him over the edge? Let's find out. So going into my final round here, I decided to do something a little ballsy. I led with the fire cast form before, so I tried to do the mind games and lead off with my Venusaur trying to catch the Whisk cast. But instead I'm greedy with the Charizard, and honestly... That's where uh, I feel like the battle was over before I even started with that lead, because we're going to get a little bit into this match, but I'm just going to fast forward ahead of a bit, because we got a little bit of technical difficulties that forced us to reset after I've done a very, very Hail Mary thing of just trying to spam my fast attack as much as I can to get the solar beam on the off chance that he would not shield expecting the water balls. And you can see how just why this plan didn't work to begin with. The fact that we had to restart it kind of like... No, no, apparently I had even bigger brain plays in store of myself. I tried to like... Spam away his what I think the real hero manner was knowing that I couldn't pull off the solar beam. So I'm just spamming water balls to get rid of his shields right off the bat. But eventually here is when he's going to like catch on. And eventually we have to restart this battle. So even though I'm like able to like get a shield away, I wasted all my shields in the process and... Blah. I decided to skip ahead. Back to when we reloaded the match. I got my Venusaur, he's got his Charizard. At least at this point, I realize just how good Dragonair is for Charizard. Unfortunately, he has the switch advantage, so I switched to my Dragonair, locked out of switching for a few seconds. So he can go into the Celio, the hard counter to Dragonair, and just whittle me away. I think I was starting to play some mind games and wear away some shields because I, I was that desperate. I call his bluff and go don't block it, body slam. Expecting that fast charge move to come in, but I'm kind of just worn out to the point where I have to use a shield at this point, and I really feel bad just wasting my Dragonair so early on, but I feel like this battle was lost the moment that I led with Venusaur against his Charizard, because he gets the switch advantage. I do my super ballsy play right early on, so like, the fact that we reloaded means like if there was any hope for that to work. He would already suspect it, and to be fair, 
I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have worked in the first place. I, it just super wouldn't work now. As you can see here, I go into the castle and try to finish off the ceiling because honestly it worked fairly well last time. And I really would rather conserve my Venusaur as long as I can. The only concern is like if his Don Charizard Pokemon is something that Venusaur can handle fairly well. And of course this wish cast. Do I go for the solar beam? Yes. And this is kind of what I mean of last ditch effort. One shield left, so of course he's gonna block it, but my only other option was to go for the water ball. And by if I used the water ball, I wouldn't have had enough energy to get back up the solar beam before he went down. And I would still be stuck in this little match of my Venusaur against his Charizard with no shields. Almost feel that was a little insult to injury, unless he just forgot I had shields. Or maybe not, maybe that Dragon Claw is just to make sure it get as much damage out as possible. Point being, no. I'm at this point just trying to spam my moves as quickly as possible, because this Charizard resists both moves I have. It is going to be very close, I have to admit. I really underestimated how much Water Bolt did it. Oh yeah, he swapped. I actually lost track of the freaking wish cast. This is your battler, pokes. <laughs> Folks and pokes. Hey. And that's all I have to share for today. I'll upload the second half of this PvP tournament in the next PvP video I do. If you want more updates of when that content comes around, Check out the site for a schedule of uploads. If you want to get it right on your feed when these videos go live and all, that's what subscribing's for, and getting notifications when I get new videos, what that bell is for, and liking and supporting the video is always appreciated. That's the main things I got. Check out the description if you want to see my site and see that schedule firsthand. And check out the channel for other things I do. Until the next time we meet, though, see y'all later.